Welcome to Mac Helpers. In this video, we're going to go over how to stylize and edit the details or add details to your presentation using the paintbrush tool. So let's go ahead and open up Keynote. And as that opens up, let's go ahead and open up Presentation 2. And so we've got two different things here. So let's go ahead and start with um, the text. So to use anything, if you let's say you don't have anything selected, if you click it, so it shows you nothing selected. So let's go ahead and double tap or that's double tap to edit. So that's to actually add a text. But let's, let's to manipulate this text in here, just highlight the thing you want to edit, then click the paintbrush tool. And it's going to give you three basic options across the top here. Let's first go under style. And it's like most things, it gives you on Apple products, it gives you six different choices right off the bat to kind of give you different fonts and stuff like that or different styles right off the bat. So there's you can kind of see how it's just changing the fill on the background. Let's go ahead and go and click style options. So this gives you three different options. The fill, which you can kind of change it here, different colors, grays and whites, a gradient style, um, or just a solid color. So let's go ahead and do the, the gradient with the, with the red there. That looks pretty cool. Then you can click border. Now when you turn borders on, it gives you a bunch of different options from changing the color of the border. So let's do like a white. That's easy to see. But it gives you colors and things like that. Then you could adjust the width or how thick that border is going to be. And let's say you leave it at 16 and then you could change it from different squiggly lines, dotted lines, marker streaks, things like that kind of see what it looks like there, see how it's got the corners bent there. Click on again, click the paintbrush tool, go back to style options. Or you can also um, click on effects and then you can add a shadow. So these gives you different couple different options here off the bat. So let's look at that, let's look at that guy. And you can also turn reflection on, see how that looks. And go back to style options. And you can turn the, mess with the opacity, make it go from kind of really dim to just completely solid and you can really adjust how the reflection looks so that's about it for this, this thing for the styles and then you go under text and this is where you actually can change how the text looks from increasing the size and color to changing the actual font itself so it gives you a lot of different options and you can actually click the information and or the i button where information and then can you can change a little bit more of how the font looks. So if it has an eye next to it, you can kind of change from light to bold. And so that's your text options. Let's go back here. You can click bold, italics. So see how this one, it doesn't actually, noteworthy doesn't, that font doesn't have an italicized version of it, but you can strike through. It's got most other things. You can change the justification of it and then the style of it. So and like I was saying earlier, in the themes, this kind of gives you, it kind of comes with pre-labeled or pre-kind of themed or different formatted things. And then the last tool for this in terms of a text box is the arrange icon. I don't really have anything. That's why it's only got a couple different options there to move it forward and back. And this is good just kind of aligning if you got several different pictures or different things on top of each other. And then you can kind of move where the text is at in that icon. You can change the columns, how the margins are set, and you can also lock it. So that, when you see that, you get little X's on there. I don't know if you can really see it, but you see how it's got the little tiny X's on there? That just means it's locked. Then if you tap it once, or tap it twice, you can hit unlock, and now you can change it again. So now let's go back in here with the paintbrush tool, and let's show you how the paintbrush tool works on an actual image. So you get the same kind of deals. It gives you six different options. You go to style options, you can turn on shadows, and then it kind of gives you a little bit more effects. Border turn the border on and like just like before you can adjust the thickness whether it's dotted but since it's an image it gives you a couple different more options and so the best thing to do is really just kind of mess around with it play around with it just just kind of get the style of how you want your particular picture or how you have got your whole presentation kind of set up and then once again you click on effects you can hit shadow a couple different options there and you can hit turn on reflection so it makes it from really dark. I'll turn the border off so you can kind of see a little bit easier what the shadow tool actually does. So there's the reflection on there. If I click that again, oops, under style options, see the reflection off to 100% on, and you can change the opacity of it, making it light or dark, as you can see me moving that up and down. Now if we go back, you can go to image, and then it gives you two different options here. 
you can edit mask or insta alpha and a mask is just kind of how you can crop the image to take out a specific spot in there so let's go ahead and edit mask and see how it kind of moves around there and then that little dotted line that you see there that's where the actual mask is going to be so what you can do here is let's say you didn't want that car in there at all you can just do it like that and then hit done and so now that image is completely gone so let me take off the reflection just so you guys kind of see a little bit easier what we're working with here see now that image is completely there so if you double tap it then you could adjust the mask even more so increase the size decrease the size and then you could use move those blue the blue dots around to kind of really adjust how that image is and you can hit done or if you don't really like how that looks just go back there and hit reset mask it brings it right back to normal and let's go ahead and shrink it back down to normal size there and then the next thing is instant alpha and what's cool is with you got an image you can delete the background so let's say I wanted to change the skies to do that you turn on instant alpha just by selecting it and then you kinda of just draw slowly and as that thing at what's highlighted will be actually deleted so that looks pretty good there it's not moving any of the part of the house or the trees and now it's kinda of hard to see because of that background but let's go ahead and just delete all this back out and then I'll show you how that works so then if you hit the plus icon and let's say add a shape Let's do like that color and let's just move that to the whole background and then let's move this to the front using the arrange tool. So now when you see it, it looks almost like that the sky is a yellowish color. This is not exactly the best example, but I just want to show you how that actually works. And so that's what instant alpha does, but if it looks like I've got the it's the image is kind of opaque a little bit. So let's go in here, yeah, let's turn that back up. So now you really don't see that background at all. Yeah, so now just now you got a, a yellow sky. And so that's kind of how that works. Now let's go back to the image and you can hit reset mask or um, replace will actually allow you to change the image altogether. So let's say I want a, the Lamborghini in there. And then you could do the same thing with the instant alpha again and just delete around the, where the car is at. So, since all these are pretty dark, it, it, it's selecting that image pretty easy. And as you can dial it down, the slower you move, then you, you just kind of go out and just kind of move the stuff as you see fit. You just want to make sure that it's not deleting any of the image that you want to keep. So that kind of gives you, shows you a little example there. And then, no, nothing selected. So if you go, go back to the image there, and then the range, you can move it back and forth in terms of range it, flip it for vertically, horizontally, back to normal. And then you could also lock the image. And when you lock it, kind of explained this earlier, it gets a little X marks on there. And so then you can't really adjust, you can't do anything with it, you can't move it or anything. All you can do is hit tap it and hit unlock. Then you can move it as you see fit again. So that's basically it for the, the, the details, the paintbrush tool. Anytime you need to change anything on how it looks, feels, just the overall appearance of it, the paintbrush tool is where you need to go to do that. So if you have any questions, make sure you email us at info at your Mac helpers. Go to our website at yourmachelpers.com. That's where we have the full keynote book where you can actually uh, purchase it. or um, And then we'll give you the whole rundown of how to create uh, great looking presentations. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment. Thanks.